hello 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 i'm nikki from exotic putty creations and today i'm going to show you how to make this here refillable vending machine with lights so if you have already purchased the vending machine video on our website there will be no need to purchase this one because i am going to add the two together if you are an epc crafters member this here will be on your dashboard. If you are a subscriber, it will be in the subscribers section and Instagram. All right, so let's get started. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do a small vending machine. Um, small party favor size vending machines. It's gonna be the eight by 10. My previous vending machines, I have done the large ones, which were about almost three feet tall, about 18 inch wide. A lot of people had problems with finding locations or places to print them out to make the vending machine. So the one that I'm doing is gonna be using the regular eight and a half by 11 paper that you can print and make at home. So this is gonna be photo glossy sticker paper. This is one of the supplies I'm using. I have already printed them out, the parts that I'm going to need. In the description box will be a link to the template, all right? And also links to all the supplies I'm using. So if I don't go over them individually, check the description box. I am gonna start off by using this foam board. So. With the larger boards, I did preach about using the Hobby Lobby size board because those were the larger machines. It was more heavy duty, more, I wanna say more of a vending machine that you can keep long term. But for these, I am using Dollar Plus, Dollar Tree Plus foam board. And with the Dollar Tree foam board, I will suggest that you peel the paper off first before you design or attach your stickers. So that's what I'm about to do now. I am basically going to just peel off that sheet because with this sheet on and when you stick your paper to it, it's gonna start lifting up. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just peel that paper off. Just like that. You're gonna to wanna to do it for both sides. All right, so that's the front. Let's do the back. So it should look like this without the protective paper on it. It will be a little more flimsier. So be careful. If you want to, you can also always use the, um, I do have one from Walgreens, not Walgreens, Walmart, but my real go-to board would be Hobby Lobby because I don't have any problems with the paper being removed after the vending machine is complete but for demonstration purposes only and for the sake of this video i'm going to use it now what i'm going to start off by doing is i'm going to print i'm going to apply my front so this is going to be the front of the vending machine and basically i'm going to apply it to the foam board to include all the parts so let's go ahead Bring the camera down so you can be able to see. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna trim some of that excess white that I do not need because I don't wanna take up too much space on my foam board. With one foam board, you're gonna be able to do one and a half vending machines so you should be able to get three two vending machines done with three pieces of foam board 
And now all I'm doing now is I'm gonna take my scalpel, which is also my tool of choice, and just pull away the backing. And before pulling off the whole back, I just like to just cut it off halfway. Not cut it off, but peel back quarter of the way. And being that it has just fallen and stuck, I'm gonna leave it like that. Cause I don't wanna mess up the uh, adhesive backing on it by lifting it up. And I'm just gonna go with it. Now that I have my placement of where I'm gonna put the other sheet, I'm just gonna cut this off so I can have less of this foam board to work with. It right here. I am using a mat, a cutting mat underneath. All right, so once I have the front cut out, I can go ahead and cut away the inside frame. Once I have the inside frame cut out, I just pop this out. And then if I have any uneven portions, and the inside of that frame, I just cut that away as well. So just basically be sure to clean up the inside of your vending machine. So I do have a six mil transparent film. This is the size that I was using for the larger machine. So I am gonna to have to cut this one to size. Instead of using the hot glue, I am going to use my double-sided tape for a cleaner look. And as you can tell by looking on the back side of the vending machine, that it looks kind of jagged, edgy. That's because after taking that paper off, it kind of, cause this foam is so cheap. So you just have to be careful when cutting and how you cut it. So basically all I'm doing is going around with the double-sided tape. You can use hot glue if you like. It's totally up to you. I do have my hot glue gun, so I will be demonstrating both hot glue and the tape. But I do this for a more cleaner look. Once you remove the tape, get your transparent film and just be very careful. Know where your placements are before putting, putting it down because you don't want to do a lot, lot of lifting and uh, repositioning. So it's down, it's in, it's good and it's stuck. Let's go ahead, let's start with the back. And 
And basically I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the front. When you print out your templates online, you will see where it says back of vending machine. It's gonna tell you which part of piece that you're printing. You wanna make sure you're doing it on eight and a half by 11 paper. My choice of paper is the glossy photo sticker paper. When printing, you wanna make sure that you set your board to 300 DPI because the templates are designed at eight and a half by 11 at 300 DPI. I don't need all of this. I am gonna cut this away. And the same thing I did for the front, I'm going to do for the back and the rest of the sides and shelving. What I'm gonna do now is I want to get my front. In the front, I want it to continue with these sides. In other words, I don't want, let's see if I can get it right. I don't want to have that in the front. You can see how you can see the white outside edge. I want this white outside edge to actually be in the inside. So your middle, sh your side panels or shelves of the side of the machine, uh, vending machine is gonna be on the inside. So with that said, and I'm gonna give you a difference in between the difference in using the hot glue and the double-sided tape. So with the hot glue, and I said that I'm gonna invest in a more precision type tip. So this here particular um, hot glue has like that wide opening and they do have them to where they have a skinnier tip for more of a precision, precision type layout. I just wanna get my feel of where I'm gonna be. And basically what you're gonna do is just put your hot glue and be careful because this glue is, will melt, melt the foam. So this is why I say I'm gonna give you the difference in between using the hot glue and a double-sided tape. And with the hot glue, you got to be quick and it's already melting the foam. And I'm gonna sit this on top Try not to bend any of your pieces and you wanna make sure that it's right on the edge. And let's just hold it down for a few. Now I am surprised because normally with the hot glue, I wind up having a lot of spillage on the on the sides and for some reason i don't have that it's, it's going more in the inside so being that it's clear you really can't tell but i got a good stick using the hot glue but be careful like i said it will melt now for the other side i am going to use the foam tape so i can show you the difference and using it as well. So I'm just gonna get my placement. And I'm gonna put a strip right on the edge because that's where I wanna be, right on the edge.
Now I'm gonna take my scalpel and basically just peel off that protective layer of paper. And then that will expose the adhesive. It's very light. You're not gonna be, it, uh, probably won't be able to see it because it is blending in with the foam board. Get that side. And you wanna make sure that you have your design on the outside. Make sure that your panel is straight. Just gonna get that stuck on there. All right, and then there you have it. So you can use the double-sided tape if you don't want to risk getting burnt using the hot glue gun, or uh, if you don't like when after using the hot glue gun and as you're putting it down, you get a lot of stringiness from the glue. So this is why I like to use the double-sided tape. Okay, that is holding just fine. Now I'm gonna do the bottom. And I should have it marked with a B. For the bottom, this is gonna be the sh uh, shelf. So you wanna make sure that the inside of this shelf here, uh, the print is inside the vending machine. Make sure that you're placing your shelves where they belong. For this, I am going to use some hot glue and I'm gonna glue the um, sides and the bottom. Being that the shelves are not gonna be exposed visibly to where you're gonna be able to see that glue droppings the glue so it's not going to matter too much for the vending machine on the outside inside and you want to make sure you get it and hold it together For the inside of the vending machine, you can use the tape if you like, especially if you're using light items, but the hot glue is going to give it a more firmer, firmer hole, a more solid hole than the uh, double-sided tape. So it's going to be totally your choice of how you want to do that. All right, so we have our bottom shelf. Now let's do the inside shelf. When doing the inside shelf, you wanna get whatever you're gonna be putting inside your vending machine and kind of size it up. Make sure that you have enough clearing clearance to put that item. I am going to cut this here shelf down a tad bit because I do not want my side panels bulging out. All right, I think that was good right there. I think I'm gonna just cut off a tad bit more, but let's do the other side. And you may have to cut your shelves as well, depend on how you place your, your side panels. So be aware of that when placing your side panels, make sure you're at that very end. 
so I'm happy with how where that placement is and I'm just gonna put hot glue on the sides only because if you put hot glue on like this front and when you get ready to place it inside your vending machine you're gonna see that glue on the uh, edge of that frame so do not put any glue on the edge of this frame on the edge of this shelf just the sides you don't want that glue poking out from the front of that vending machine. You don't want them to see the um, your mechanics of that glue, so. And then I still kind of see the indention where I was earlier, so I'm just gonna follow that same path. And you want to make sure you're straight. I think I'm gonna use my mat just to make sure I'm straight and even. All right, you want to kind of hold the sides in, but don't put too much pressure because you'll bend that shelf in the inside. I just need to add a little bit more because I was not as quick as I should have been. Keep in mind that hot glue is hot and it will melt that foam. So try not to overdo it. For the top of the shelf, I want the print to be on the outside. And I'm going to lay it right on top of the vending machine. And for the Top, I'm gonna glue, put add the glue to the top and not on the shelf. All right, so this is what we have so far. Now for the back of the vending machine, on the back, this is gonna be your back. You do not wanna place that on the inside, like that. You wanna place that on the back. So you're gonna also have an option of customizing the back of your vending machines from the templates that we have in the shop. But for now, I just did it this solid purple. And that is what you want to do. You're going to want your design for the back of the vending machine to be in the back. If you want the front to have a design as well, you would just have to print it. But this is what it would look like without it being print, any print in the inside. Let's get our ruler. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to score the back of this vending machine about a half an inch. I'm just going to score maybe a half an inch from the back. I'm not going to cut deep. I'm just going to score it. I do not want to cut this off away from the back. So I'm just going to cut through that first layer of foam. And I'm all off. I don't know how I got so off. Let's 
I might as well keep with it. All right, let's let's do this. I got so off. Try to stay in a straight line. All right, that was so off. All right, so you should only be getting that kind of bend. You want to make sure that you're straight. You don't want to. And right here, I almost cut too deep because you, you see the line. And hope, thankfully, you got like this here paper holding it together. But don't cut so deep to where you actually cut that paper off. I'm just going to hot glue this side. And then add the back on. All right, so now when the customer gets it, if you're shipping it like this, they would be able to open and close it and add their own custom treats. If you like, you can put a latch on the back to where they can always open and close it. Right now, I do not have a latch. I'm quite sure I can find something that can work as a latch. But what I'm going to do is add some double-sided tape on the edge here. I'm not going to uh, tack it, tack the arm um, back because and just in case the customer want to uh, put a latch, they can, but always give them an alternative of putting like filling it their self and if they decide they want to close it up or seal it up let them know i got a strip of double-sided tape on the edge just peel and close it if not you can put a latch on that way once they give it to the guests they can be able to open and close it if they like but this is what we have now, as you can tell, in the center when we cut out the front, we had this piece. You can use it as a display, whatever you like. But I also cut out, a uh, printed out another image of the character. So basically what I'm going to do is, you for a professional look, let me suggest that you use like a, uh, some type of cutting machine, Silhouette, Cricut, something that can cut your line straight but if you don't have a Cricut machine or any type of cutting machine that can do that then basically cut it out by hand in which I'm going to do for this here demonstration this video so for this video I'm just going to cut it out by hand just in case you do not have a Cricut machine, a silhouette, or any type of cutting machine that'll be able to cut it out, giving it a professional look. So I'm gonna do my best by uh, best to cut it out by hand because I'm so used to using a Cricut. But I'm gonna do my best. All right, so getting those fingers was really tedious. Tedious, is that a verb? Well, anyway, I did it. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tack her right here. So I'm gonna do a strip there and a strip on her hair. To give it a 3D look, I'm going to use some foam tape.
and by doing this this is going to give it more like a 3d look She's popping off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some double sided tape to the bottom. Best thing about this tape that it is clear. So, uh, like right there is where I have the tape. And I'm just sticking that right here on the frame, inside frame. So for this here piece, I'm gonna stick, just sticking some double-sided tape along that side. That's just to get it to hold and stick and stay in place. So once you fill up your vending machine, then you can go ahead, peel this here tape off, or you can basically put a latch or something here to close it. But how about if you want, it's a night event and you want your vending machine to be lit up. Basically, all you have to do is add your lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these items but if you know you're going to be adding lights before you do the vending machine, uh, I suggest that you put the lights in before. So being that I already have this stuck, I'm not going to try to remove it. I'm basically going to open up my lights. And before I do anything else, I'm going to pull this tab and turn them on to make sure that they work and they do because the first thing you want to do is put your lights in you go to turn it on and it doesn't work so always make sure your lights work and basically what I'm going to do is I want to be able to put a hole here because I want to thread this through. Just use your, your scalpel or your craft knife and basically kind of poke a hole through it. You can see the hole. And then I'm going to go make like an X shape. Don't worry about that because your uh, switch is going to cover that. Get your lights and basically just thread it through. Let me turn my lights on as I work. Once 
once you have your lights threaded through, you want to seal that off by covering up that hole. So I'm just gonna put a dab bit of glue here. I'm not gonna put any glue on that wire because you don't want that hot glue to burn that wire. Let it cool some because you don't wanna give no type of reaction with those batteries. Once it cool, just place it. And then you still have exposure to the knob, to the switch. All right, so let's open it up. And like I said, you really want to do this here before you put all your candy 